Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back, pet parents. Today we are talking about spaying and neutering your dogs. And I have to say, there are there are lots of things. I, I You know, we always change our mind, right? Because we grow and we learn new things. And that is part of being a human, right? Is, is learning new things and growing and changing our perspective. Two, there are two things that are still fairly controversial that I have definitely changed my opinion on in the past few years. One of them being breeding dogs and the other being spaying and neutering your pets. Now I say that um, they're still pretty controversial because the opinions that I have today are slightly different from the mainstream narrative. That isn't to say that there isn't merit in what the mainstream narrative is. And we're going to talk about that. I'm actually, so I'm not talking about breeding today. I think we're going to do a whole other podcast episode on dog breeding, but today we're specifically talking about spaying and neutering our pets. And for many, many, many years, I was very much on board with what the mainstream narrative in the U S is right. It is, you know, a spay and neuter your pets like period. And, and, end of story. And there are even some states like California who make it a law that if you adopt a dog from a shelter uh, or a rescue, and then um, some breeders have also adopted this, that it your that pet has to be spayed before it leaves the shelter or the rescue. And okay, I get it because we are dealing with, I don't want to say we're dealing with an overpopulation issue. I don't think that that is the real underlying issue. I think it's irresponsible pet parents and not enough homes, not enough responsible homes for the amount of dogs and cats that are in the shelter system. But again, I think a lot of that more than anything has to do with the irresponsibility of humans in general. Of course, if you're listening to this podcast, this probably doesn't apply to you. But when we're talking about when we're when we're generalizing, right, when we're talking about this issue on a whole in the country, at least of the United States, and I, I think it's similar in the UK, but I'm not an expert on that. So don't quote me on that. But so yeah, there we have a problem for sure. And the quickest, easiest solution uh, that was given to that problem was to spay and neuter all animals. There, Okay, there is an inherent issue in that. If you spay and neuter 100% of dogs and cats, the species ends, right? Of course, we're only talking about in one country, so we're not, you know, they're going to be in other countries. But, and of course, if you had asked me about this, even five years ago, I would have said, absolutely. All animals, all pets need to be spayed and neutered, right? Well, okay. So let's talk a little bit more about why this one size fits all solution isn't relevant and isn't sustainable. One is that, you know, we are, we're seeing so many, oh, we're seeing so many diseases illnesses in our dogs and cats, so much so that the School of Veterinary Medicine at the University of California in Davis, um, which UC Davis is <laughs> what it's called for short, has done multiple studies very recently, um, 2020, 2021, on the effects of not just early sterilization, they, they were looking at early sterilization, but just sterilization in general of dogs. And there are so many unintended negative side effects from that. The very first thing that I learned about was that larger dogs, we're talking about like German Shepherds, Golden Retrievers, you know, the big dogs, they can take many, many months into years to fully develop their musculoskeletal system. So when we take into account spaying or neutering these animals, we are removing the organs, the sex organs, right, of these animals, which 
these organs produce invaluable hormones to the body. And that can, the, these are endocrine disruptors when we, when they don't have these hormones in the body any longer and can seriously hinder growth and development. But that's actually not the only thing that spay and neuter um, has these unintended negative side effects of. Some of the others include osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer, um, cruciate ligament tears and ruptures. These are, I mean, I see them all the time. Just scrolling through social media, people are talking about, you know, their dogs having these um, tears and ACL and CCL and all, you know, all these uh, muscles are being, ligaments are being torn. Um, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, uh, fractures, these happen in male cats in some of their long bones. Um, that is, is a known side effect. Um, lymphosarcoma, which is a cancer of the lymphatic glands and tissue. Hemangiosarcoma, which is a cancer of the heart or spleen. Prostate cancer, urinary tract cancer, urinary tract blockages in male cats. Yep, that is very prevalent. Mast cell tumors, Cushing's disease, atypical Cushing's, diabetes, incontinence in female dogs, allergies, alopecia, which is hair loss, obesity. Oh, ob obesity is a huge one. Um, negative vaccine reactions, excessive fear of people or dogs, fear of noises, separation anxiety, touch sensitivity, cognitive impairment, aggression. All of these things are known negative and unintended side effects of desexing your dog or cat at a very early age or in general. There's uh, that UC Davis has gone on to study more, um, not just early spay and neuter, but literally any time in the lifespan of a dog. UC Davis was specifically um, studying dogs and there's not a whole lot of difference. There can be some differences, but there's not a whole lot of difference in these unintended negative consequences. So currently in the United States, standard practice is that dogs would be spayed up to six months of age. Um, some of them, females specifically, would be spayed prior to their first heat is, is what a lot of veterinarians recommend and what a lot of um, rescue workers and shelters will recommend. And all of this, again, is surrounded by the irresponsibility of owners. Because while a lot of people have very, very good intentions, they don't necessarily always follow through with their good intentions. And so that's another reason why these rescue systems, these shelter systems in the U.S. are requiring that before the animal even leaves the shelter, before they go home with you, they're going to be spayed and, or, or neutered because, uh, you know, best intentions, right? They, they generally are never followed through with for, for most people. So that's the standard practice in the U.S., What's really interesting, and I don't think I mentioned this in the list of unintended negative side effects, was that Dr. Becker actually, in a blog post that she wrote about um, spay and neuter and how her opinion uh, and beliefs on this practice changed uh, in the early years of her being a practicing veterinarian, was that she was starting to, see, because she also uh, I mean, just like everybody else, you go through vet school and you think this is the best, this is what we have to do, this is the best thing, um, is to uh, spay and neuter all of these animals as early as possible. But what she states in her blog post is that she was noticing that the number of dogs she was diagnosing with hypothyroidism was at an all-time high. And she, after talking to some colleagues of hers, um, found out that this is an unattended negative consequence of early spay and neuter. So we talked a little bit about the studies being done at UC Davis. And the first one in 2020 that was published in 2020, uh, that was a 10-year study that looked at 35 different dog breeds and the effects of desexing on these dog breeds. So it wasn't like they had 10 animals they were watching, right? Like they did a lot of research um, across a lot of breeds of dogs. And then in 2021, they expanded upon that to mixed breed dogs because the reality is most of us have mixed breed dogs. So in the 2021 study, um, both the 2020 and the 2021 study, they they did find at these uh, UC Davis was that the age of spay and neuter didn't 
necessarily um, affect the risk level of these negative unintended consequences, right? So regardless of whether they were spayed early or um, later in life, the risk is about the same because again, we are, we're removing the sex organs from the body. And that means that those organs are no longer producing the necessary hormones in the body. And that, that is just causing all kinds of havoc in our pets' bodies. So what Dr. Becker advocates for, and I um, am completely on board with this. In fact, I have started telling many people about this. Uh, unfortunately, not too many veterinarians are doing this, but ask around. Instead of spaying or neutering your pet, which let's be honest, while it would be best to leave our animals as nature intended them, right? That is the best case scenario. The reality currently <laughs> in our lives in the country is that there are just so many animals, millions of animals, dogs and cats being killed every year because we don't have enough homes for them. We don't have enough responsible people adopting them and the shelters are just overwhelmed. It's unfortunate and granted, I think, you know, spay and neuter was the best that they knew to do at the time to help end as much suffering as possible. Um, but these unintended consequences are, are a lot, right? The, the, that's a lot. So to, to bring an animal into your home and do everything right, right? You're the best pet parent you can be. You're feeding a species appropriate diet. You're getting your dog plenty of um, exercise. There's plenty of environmental enrichment. You're reducing the stress on both you and your dog because your stress affects your dog. You're doing theoretically everything right, but your dog was spayed or neutered early on in life or at all, right, in life. And so these hormones that are missing now from your dog's body because their sex organs were removed. I mean, these are things that we can't go back and fix. Even with hormone therapy, these things are not being, whatever may be going wrong in your dog's body, hormone therapy isn't enough to fix it. That's another study that was done. So what do we do, right? And there are absolutely things we can do. If we think about how we do vasectomies and hysterectomies in humans, we can do that with our dogs as well. So we can actually sterilize our pets without removing their sex organs, very much in the same way we do with humans. And this allow, allows the sex organs to remain intact and continue producing the necessary hormones in the body. We're also allowing our dog, I mean, we're allowing our dogs and cats to be as close to as nature intended them to be as possible to give them the best opportunity to thrive, right? For their bodies to be running on all cylinders and thriving and not just surviving. That's not to say that there is never an instance where it could, could it be medically necessary to remove the ovaries or the testes, right? The, these things can happen. There can be medical necessity for this, um, but that is much like th that risk percentage is much smaller than the risk we're seeing in just blindly desexing all of our animals. So very much like anything else, any other medical decision that we have with ourselves or with our pets, this should be done on an individual basis. This should be something that you do a ton of research on. This should be something that you can have an educated conversation with your veterinarian on and talk to your medical team for your pet. If you have not heard me talk about this in the past, I have definitely talked about this. It, I, I personally feel, and there are many others um, out there who feel that our pets deserve a medical team. Um, having one veterinarian who knows X, Y, Z is, is wonderful, but having a team, hopefully that includes holistic and possibly, um, integrative, possibly homeopathic veterinarians to get multiple viewpoints, um, on the health of your pet is going to help you create more well-rounded balanced decisions for your pet ultimately in the, the long run. And having an individualized plan of spaying and neutering or or sterilizing without desexing, which would be a vasectomy or a hysterectomy, 
these are things that should be done on an individual basis. Now, all of my pets, I, I, you know, I don't have any young pets any longer. All of my pets are aging. All of my cats are currently at the time of this recording between 13 and 14 years old. And I had them spayed and neutered when they were very, very young because 13, 14 years ago, that's what I thought was the absolute best thing to do for all pets. Kim, my dog, I adopted her from a rescue in California. She was spayed before we were allowed to bring her home. That was the law in California. I had no say over it. But even at that time, um, which was ooh, going on seven years, seven years next month, my goodness, I still didn't know any better. I would have thought, yeah, she needs to be spayed, right? So it's. I just want to put this information in your head to understand that Every medical decision, regardless of how you view it as, I mean, from taking antibiotics to having the surgery, a, a major surgery like spay or neuter um, or any other, any and everything in between is a very individualized thing. Like you and your vet and your med, your pet's medical team should be discussing all options and making sure you're choosing what is best for you and your pet at the time. So with that, I, I really hope this helps you to broaden <laughs> the information, broaden your understanding and knowing that there is other, that there is more information out there. There are other options out there uh, to, to continue to look and seek, look for all of the best options that you think is going to make your pet the happiest and healthiest they can possibly be. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. Um, make sure you are finding me on social media so that we can uh, have a conversation about this podcast, other podcasts, uh, what's going on with you and your pets. I would love to hear from you. I am, I'm all over the place. Um, Instagram is a great way to get in touch with me, uh, but the very best place to get in touch with me is going to be to join my Patreon. So we have a wonderful, um, tight knit family over on Patreon. You get exclusive content over there. First look at content over there. Uh, there's, there's lots going on over there and Patreon, um, is actually coming out with a lot of new features. So every new feature they put out, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on board with it. So, <laughs> um, there's lots to come in 2022 for sure. For our Patreon family, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Um, you can go to the petparentingreset.com and click in the navigation menu, uh, click on Patreon, or you can go to Patreon and, and search the Pet Parenting Reset or Jessica Fisher, um, which is my name. So with that, uh, you guys uh, are doing wonderful. I know you are just because you're listening to this podcast. You're, you're a wonderful pet parent. I know you're trying your best and you are doing everything you can to get as much good information to make the best decisions for your pet. So give your pet some extra love from me today. And until next time, bye guys. Oh, oh.